So, what did the panel think of uh, what Hone Harawira was speaking about? First of all, let's talk about, uh, he insists that um, because Maori are First Nation, they have uh, First Nation rights, and that means uh, that they should have seats on the super city. Here's what Hone Harawira said. As the First Nation people of Aotearoa, as the Tangata Whenua, as the people who have been giving land for the settlement of Auckland for 200 years, there's an obligation on the Crown to recognise the right of Ngāti Whātua and Tainui and all of the hapu and iwi around this area representation on this council. All right, Sandra Lee, comment on that. Is he right? Uh, yes, he's right. I think that the Royal Commission could hardly be accused of being hikoiologists, but they made it very clear in their findings that they thought that there should be tangata whenua representation at the table. And I would have thought that in a post-treaty settlement environment, it would just be savvy to have some of the people who own some of the most strategic assets in the region hmm. at the table and up front. What do you think, Tim? Well, we've always had it. I mean, this is why I, the debate is really only because we're looking at the super city. But when I was on the Auckland Regional Authority back in the mid-80s, we had Mrs Minhinnick, I think, from Waiuku. She was the representative. And it did work well in a practical sort of sense because uh, a lot of the issues are urapas and road building and how to mesh those in together, um, fishing rights and the, one of the great achievements of the ARA and, and Māori representation and their often supported environmental issues. We pushed the commercial fishermen out of Waitamata Harbour and that's really given the people of Auckland a great fishing ground and they were very supportive on those issues. It worked well, there was no fuss, there was no debate and I think on the regional council later on they elected two Māori representatives. And let's be clear, the, the change from what the Royal Commission recommended to what the government is proposing at the moment, um, I think we would fully expect to have virtually no diversity around the table, and I, I mean diversity broadly and specifically in terms of Māori. And I say that because at the moment it looks like they're pushing first past the post. They have downsized the number of at-large, um, and if we had STV and more at-large um, members, there'd be a greater chance of diversity. And then removing the specific Māori representation. And I agree with both my panellists here. Let, let's step back and think from a very practical sense. It makes sense to have them there. It is a stronger system for it. The greatest danger facing local government at the moment is apathy. Here we have a group of people who are going to march and say, we want, let us in. We want to be part of it. We don't want to be left separate. We want to be part of it. That's healthy. Or have we moved beyond this? I mean, have we got to the point where, where Maori have seen that they can elect their own party? This party can become very influential um, in government with the National Party uh, as well, which is an extraordinary kind of a thing. Couldn't Maori put together a ticket for the super city? It's going to be very hard under the new um, proposition of a super city for a number of diverse categories of New Zealand citizens and Aucklanders to get elected. It's going to be harder for less affluent people. It's going to be harder for women. It's going to be harder for Māori and, in fact, the Chinese people who were referred to earlier for ethnic minorities. It's also going to be harder simply by virtue of the sheer scale. So and the should, we put an Indian, should, should we put an Indian representative on, a Chinese representative, well, a Pacific Island representative? Now, now why is the spurious? I'll tell you why it's spurious. It's analogous, forgive the animal analogy, but it's analogous to saying, why are New Zealand are we putting all this money into saving Kiwi and we're not doing it for peacocks as well. Of course we welcome new New Zealand citizens but what distinguishes Māori in this country and it should be well recognised by now 200 years on is the fact that we are unique endemic like the Kiwi to this country. Our language and culture can be found here and here only. Let me just go to what Hone Harawira was saying about um, the banana box. I have no issues whatsoever with uh, Trevor Trevor Mallard feeling indigenous, that's up to him. And congratulations to him. And if he's part and parcel of this culture such that he thinks thinks that way, that's great. But there can only ever be one time at the Fenway, that's Māori. So, no matter how often generations of Pākehā are born in this country, we can never be indigenous, is that right? 
Well, no, it's, that's a fairly intellectual debate. I think historians have been wrestling with that one. And uh, it, I think it, it's accepting. I think the um, cat in the banana box analogy was satirical. And so was Trevor Mallard's action in saying, right, I'm going to be an, an indigenous person. I think it, it is just a historical thing. If the Chinese were here a thousand years before Europeans Apparently arrived, they, they were would have... 21, have you read the book anyway? Uh, they might have been. Well, that'd be interesting, wouldn't it? Well, Paul, I think we're confusing two different types of representation. I mean, when you talk about Chinese and, and um, you know, having more women, you're talking about diversity around the table, and I'm all for that. Yep. I think that's best achieved, though, through using a proportional representation system. We're talking something very specific when we talk about Māori representation. But you aren't seriously... And I think it's a poor reading of the Local Government Act if you don't understand that it undertakes both those sorts of, of representation. You aren't seriously suggesting that we have to learn about another proportional representation system before we well, vote for the... some people already are using, using it anyway. It. Yeah. OK. Well, I've, I've got a question coming from a viewer. I know the name of the viewer is David Rowe, but uh, Tim in the control room, if you could tell me the question, because I'm not quite sure what the question actually is. Why can't Maori be organising themselves into a ticket? Uh, well, I, I don't think it's just an issue of organising. It's very hard for anybody to organise a, a ticket in Auckland yeah. and has been historically, except for CNR, over decades and decades and decades, they've ha had a, a minority. But I think we just have to think in the modern context. We are in a post-treaty settlement yeah. phase. Most mm. of the strategic assets have a strong um, impact or relationship with the mm. tangata whenua of this region. It's not called tamaki makaurau for nothing. There are over 100 iwi with a considerable um, interest in this region, and to simply exclude them from the table is yeah. politically So it can crazy. work. Well, what you're saying, it no, can work. It can be very right. useful but, at the point of view of liaising on things and buying it. Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah and, but and a ticket it. under first past the post, it still doesn't work. Right. All you, you have don't. to do is look at the first past the post seats in the House. What are the politics see? of this, Therese Arsenault? Do you think, is, is Key going to have to give in on this? I yep. mentioned this yep. to him on Friday. He seemed very bright and buoyant about it and says there'll be a solution. Uh, yeah, well, he I came think... to the Bluff Oyster Festival yesterday That's and I right. spent an hour with him and he, he was very relaxed about Maori representation. Yeah. So yeah. I don't see it as locked in. This, this is just the next draft, this proposal. That's and on doesn't the table it make now. sense? I mean, they've been so hardlined so far about the super city. What really matters, I think, to National is getting that unity. Well, of course, I would expect at some stage, politically, it's very astute to make some concessions. And clearly, the Māori Party's relationship with National is important to them. And is very good. It seems to be very good. It's interesting, while they have these debates, nothing seems to fundamentally threaten it. They well, seem well, to... well that's, the, that's the point. And look, uh, Key didn't need the Māori Party numerically, but the sky didn't fall in when he got them at the table. No. What will be different for Auckland? Very good panellists. Still to come, more from your panel, uh, your feedback as well, and what to look out for next week, because the House resumes again next week. But uh, next I'm going to be speaking to Labor's David Cunliffe, the finance spokesman, and act Sir Roger Douglas on their predictions for the budget and where they think the government is going right, where they think the government is going wrong.